Wow, 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 wow. NVIDIA GeForce Now have taken cloud gaming to the next level. Even the harshest of cloud gaming cynics, and I'm talking to people like you, Linus Tech Tips, has to be impressed with this new RTX 4080 tier. It is blindingly good. I've been testing out this new ultimate tier from GeForce Now for the last two weeks. And I'll tell you what, color me impressed. So let's break it all down, find out what it's all about. And I'm gonna let you know my experience of the RTX 4080 tier. Let's check it out. Anyone who's seen my previous review of the 3080 tier knows I'm a convert when it comes to the GeForce Now top tier, especially as a non-PC gamer. I think they've got me hooked on PC games. The visual fidelity, considering it's being sent from the cloud, is pretty impressive, and the latency, probably the best in class. And I've tried most cloud gaming setups, being a big advocate for Stadia for, you know, many a year. But this 4080 tier that I've been testing out for the last two weeks, now as I said, called the ultimate tier, is something else. I mean, unless you're an esports professional or a hardcore gamer with a gaming rig that even Linus Tech Tips would be envious of, the GeForce Now Ultimate tier is an incredible PC gaming experience. Without the need of a $3,000 gaming setup, your old potato PC, a Chromebook, or even your phone plays AAA games at the highest fidelity with blistering fast performance. When you're getting a latency that's faster than your Xbox Series X natively, how can you not be impressed? Now, look, I'm not going to do a forensic analysis with pixel counts and latency tests and all of that. No, I'll leave that to the digital foundries of the world and the likes and all of that. No, I'm going to tell you about my experience, what it felt like, what it looks like, and why I was blown away by the new GeForce Now Ultimate tier. Because at the end of the day, gaming is about the experience you have, what it feels like, how it plays, and how it responds. And boy, the 4080 tier responds brilliantly. But first, some background. So GeForce Now Ultimate is the new name for the top tier. And you'll probably notice the name in your settings. You can probably see it here, up here. Um, it will say Ultimate there. And you'll be upgraded automatically to the RTX 4080 tier if you are a Ultimate member. The rollout starts as of today, the 19th of January, um, and it's going to be rolled out in phases, so depending on what region you're in, so and what server that you use, your GeForce Now server or GeForce Now partner server. So keep checking the status in your settings to see whether it's been rolled out to you. But you don't have to wait long if you want to try out the ultra wide resolutions and HDR because. If you are already streaming on the RTX 3080, as of today, you can take advantage of the ultra wide resolutions and HDR on the GeForce Now PC and Mac OS apps. So keep checking the status in your settings to see whether it's been rolled out to you. The new ultimate tier, as it's called, has the following features. So you can game at 1080p, but at 240 frames per second on a PC and Mac with a compatible VRR display. It has support for the following ultra-wide resolutions on PC and Mac. So if you've got one of those fancy ultra-wide uh, PCs, you can play at 3840 by 1600 or 3440 by 1440 or 2560 by 1080. And you can stream up to 4K at 120 frames per second on PC and Mac. And it allows HDR in supported games on PC and Mac as well. You get full ray tracing and DLSS3 in supported games as well. So check those out. It really helps if you try and set yourself up to get the best experience. Now, I always play with an Ethernet connection, as in my experience, that's going to give you the best results and it's more reliable than your Wi Fi setup. With any device, Honestly, I recommend using an Ethernet connection for that best experience. 
That way you're going to kind of ensure that you've got low packet loss, low network jitter, and, you know, a consistency when it comes to the latency. Balance mode is probably the best setting in your GeForce Now. It automatically will default to the balance here. Um, and what you want to do is you, if you want to get that 240 frames per second, so that's 1080p, 240 frames per second, if you've got a 240 hertz monitor and you want to experience that kind of NVIDIA GeForce Reflex experience, then you need to set it to the competitive uh, there. But generally, it defaults to balanced. That's all you kind of really uh, need. Now, if you want to try the ultra wide monitor, well, you don't actually need one, but um, it's probably highly recommended. You'll just get sort of black lines across the top and the bottom if you try it on a conventional 21 by 9 screen. And if you do have a, you know, super wide screen, then games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Destiny 2, Far Cry 6, Marvel's Midnight Suns, No, no Man's Sky, Rocket League, are great games to really showcase the kind of wide monitor experience. In terms of the internet connection, to really get the maximum out of streaming at say 4K at 120 frames per second, you're gonna need at least 45 megabits per second for streaming at 4K at 120 frames per second. Now I get an average of 50 megabits per second in my house here, and that's absolutely perfect. I have no problem when it comes to cloud gaming with those speeds. And you need at least 35 megabits per second to play at 2K, 120 frames per second on most iMacs. And at least 35 megabits per second for your 1080 experience at 240 frames per second. Now, if you are using that competitive mode with Reflex on GeForce Now, it synchronizes the in-game um, frames per second with the streaming frames per second. Um, and this is sort of a, a first. And so what that does is it increases the smoothness and it reduces the latency, especially when paired with a G-Sync monitor, where you'll find that latency is further reduced and you are getting a near eSports quality gaming experience in supported games. I Unfortunately, I didn't get to test the reflex on a 240 hertz monitor as the highest sort of refresh rate I have in the house is on my son's gaming monitor, which is at 180 hertz. But even on that, it was suitably impressive. NVIDIA claim that the click to pixel latency is as low as 28.5 milliseconds, which if you just think about that, considering it's being served by the cloud, 28.5 milliseconds latency is bonkers. Most devices playing natively don't deliver that. Now, clearly not everyone will end up getting this kind of level of latency. And, you know, NVIDIA measured latency results as low as 35.3 milliseconds of click to pixel latency in, say, Rainbow Six Siege. And you can test out their uh, sort of testing summary and their results uh, here. I'll put it on screen for you. But as I said, I'm not doing a side-by-side -side pixel comparison. I'm just going on how it felt and how it looked to me. I mean... Take Fortnite, for instance. I don't even play Fortnite. Hell, you can see I even have to look down at the controls to see which buttons I'm pressing. You know, that's how unfamiliar I am with the game. But I was second in my first game and then got two back-to-back -back wins playing duos with my son. Now, I put that down to smoothness and responsiveness because I ended up getting one of the sort of final kills in one of those games. So it wasn't just a case of my son carrying me. And I actually went in, even though the settings are kind of optimized automatically, I actually went in and I, to I turned up some of those settings even higher, uh, even though I was playing on a 60 hertz 4K monitor, because I just wanted to sort of push it to its limits. And, you know, the results were even better looking than I expected. And look, yes, there are better looking games that I could kind of use as an example. But I wanted an example of one of the most popular games in the world just to sort of show you how it looks and plays and how it feels. I also tested Destiny 2, which is my sort of go-to when comparing cloud gaming devices. And even in that, I noticed a difference from my first 3080 experience and that's not just in the visuals, but in responsiveness. It got pretty hectic in there. And yet, you know, you could do sort of 360s and just the responsiveness and the smoothness was incredible. Someone more into sort of PC building and stuff like that should definitely price up the cost of a gaming PC that will give you the same results that the GeForce Now Ultimate tier gives you. Not only that, what you should do is price up what it would have cost to make a 3080 tier 
in October 2021 and then to upgrade to a 4080 tier now because that's what you're actually getting. You're getting an upgrade after just over a year at no additional cost. Look, as I said earlier, unless you're a pro esports gamer or really hardcore PC master race, you're going to be hard pressed to beat the experience of GeForce Now Ultimate. Considering the average graphics cards in 2022 was something like a 1650, trust me, GeForce Now Ultimate blows the average gaming PC and the average gaming experience out of the water. And it's all being served by the cloud. If you're new to cloud gaming, then trust me, it wasn't always this good. But boy, what a time to jump on board. I highly recommend you try out the new GeForce Now Ultimate tier. But just be warned, other cloud experiences in terms of performance, smoothness and latency don't come anywhere near. Anyway, so there you go. I just wanted to share my experience of testing out GeForce Now RTX 4080 tier, the ultimate tier. Special shout out to GeForce Now NVIDIA for kind of giving me secret access for a little while to test it out and to have a little bit of a play. I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, then please hit the likes because I like it, YouTube likes it, and it helps people like you find brilliant content just like this. And if you are new here, do me the great honor, Aragada Gazamas, of hitting that subscribe button, toggling that notification bell, and that way you'll know when I go live with content just like this. And hey, if you want to find more exciting videos that I've done on cloud gaming and gaming in general, then why don't you check out the videos over here? These ones over here. I highly recommend them. They're very good. Thank you for your time.